I'm very intrigued by your account because I know you've had one of the more unusual cancers which you mentioned at the beginning, a penile cancer. And it's important that we give adequate space to everyone who's got various types of cancer in the programme. So I appreciate you joining us. Can I actually ask you about your early history, first of all? In other words, what was your health like from a child and then developing? Because I know you had an unusual start to life, didn't that, you? That's right. I was born with something called um, ectopica visca, which is when the kidneys have formed the wrong way round and the bladder is formed outside the body. Unfortunately, I spent the first eight years of my life in the Leicester Royal Infirmary and also, unfortunately, there wasn't a lot of support from my parents. Uh, although I was born at home, mum and dad seemed to think it wise at the time that they just took me to A&E at the Leicester Royal and I was just left there. Um, all of this involved quite a lot of major operations, uh, which carried on until I was around about eight years of age. And since then, I've been seeing a consultant every three months. Yeah. So you had quite a lot of early life experience in the hospital. Yeah. So much so that you almost were kind of living there for That's quite right, a while. That's right, yeah. It was my home for the yeah. first eight years of my life. Do you, do you, does, is it still vivid in your mind? That very, time? very vivid. Yeah. Very vivid. Did it, I'm intrigued, you know, when somebody spent that long in hospital as a, as a youngster. Did it just seem normal to you? I didn't know any different. Yeah. I thought that was the norm. Yeah. And I thought that's where babies went until they were old enough to go home. Yeah. And what, what was the situation with the friends and that? Did you, were you able to make friends or were they friends from the wards? And that the only thing? friends I had was uh, like doctors, nurses and whatever patients was on the ward at the time. Yeah. Looking back on that time, do you feel that um, influenced your later development or did you just kind of make an, an adjustment to it because that was just normal for you? Um, it definitely influenced me. It made me a very determined person mm. and anything that came along, I tried to beat it in my own way. Yes. So later, obviously, I know that you were diagnosed with this penile cancer. Do you think that was at all related to that unusual medical um, history that you had? Um, that was a question I asked my consultant when mm. he first diagnosed me. Yes. And he says it wasn't related at all. Anybody could have got it. Two independent Totally independent. in a way. Yeah, so totally how, independent. How did your um, diagnosis, your cancer diagnosis come about? Um, my diagnosis came about was when I noticed two very tiny lumps in my groin, mm. uh, which I went to my GP with straight away. Yeah. Because of health issues in the past, you don't tend to delay when there's anything wrong. And he organised a biopsy and it was found that they was the secondary cancer. I see. Uh, so obviously from then on they had to find out where the primary was and it turned out to be penile cancer. Mm. Had there been a scan or were this, was it early symptoms that gave the indication of those initial um, lumps? Um, what it was when they did the scan, um, they found cancer at the base of the penis and also uh, in my lower intestine. Yeah. And it was obvious from scans after that that it was getting worse quite rapidly. Had you had any symptoms or signs down in the penis area? Absolutely nothing mm. whatsoever, just these two lumps. Yes. Um, but then obviously as the cancer progressed, yeah. I, in myself, I, um, physically I went downhill, lost a lot of weight. Yeah. Um, but in fairness to the hospital, because they had to get so many consultants together, it was quite a while before I actually went in for my operation. Right. Now, the, I know the operation was a major, major, major uh, operation in itself, but prior to that, was there any other treatment given to um, prepare you for that operation? N no, um, unfortunately, there wasn't any medical treatment because of what would happened in the past um, and the different issues I was born with. They wanted to wait and they could, so they could sort everything out just in one fell swoop, as it were. I see. Now, what did the operation actually uh, involve? What they did, um, they made um, an incision from the bottom of my chest down to my penis mm -hmm. and two incisions at the side down to my penis. Unfortunately, they um, also found a hernia in a 
an ulcer. Um, all the cancer was removed, the hernia was sorted out and the ulcer. And then because I had lost so much weight, uh, they wasn't able to do skin grafts from any part of my body. So they had to use um, a procedure using pig skin and everything was reconstructed. Both uh, my stomach and my penis was all reconstructed using pig skin. Wow. And luckily everything came back together and working fine. That's good to hear. Um, it sounds like an incredible operation. Was that a new thing, cutting edge? You know, I haven't heard of that before. I uh, did never done it before in this country. I was the first one. Really? Yeah. So, may hopefully anybody who's unfortunate enough to get that in the future, that yeah. you know, don't think all is lost. No. You know, there is things out there that can be done. Yeah. Do you know what they used to offer before this? Uh, well, what it would have meant if, if uh, they couldn't have done that was would have been complete removal of the penis. I mean, obviously, especially, f um, obviously for a man, it's going to have a major psychological impact. Yes. Especially if you're married or you're in a, a relationship, whatever that relationship may be. Fair enough. There is going to be the impact. So really, I was very, very lucky to have such expertise close at hand. Yeah. Very lucky. What were you told about the upcoming procedure as, you know, as time ticked down to the operation? Did you know enough about it or were things rapidly developing and they were kind of updating you on a regular basis? Um, they, they was updating me like sort of every week. Uh, one of the consultants or the registrar would ring me and say, well, obviously ask how I was and say, right, we've thought about this, we've thought about that. And I don't really think um, they knew the cells until the last minute till we could get all three consultants together exactly how it was going to go. Mm. I mean, luckily, it went as planned. Um, and everything tur turned out so well. It was just amazing. Mm. After such a, a gloomy start, thinking if this was going to be really, really life-changing, yeah. um, to think that you were going to like... Um, if you like, not be a man anymore. Yes. Um, and not only that, it's, it's the impact on your wife. It doesn't matter how long you've been married or how much you love each other, it's still going to have an impact because at the end of the day, everybody needs a physical side to the relationship. Definitely. Whether that be, you know, small amounts, large amounts, it doesn't matter. Everybody needs that side. Yeah. And obviously you have the impact on the rest of the family because if mum and dad are not happy, children are not happy. Yeah.